What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, yeah, I know, a little different. The green screen is back. Yeah, I know, right? Green screen is back. And um, games, lots of games, lots of scores. It's basically this board right here that I showed way earlier in my channel. And I thought um, that board is too small. And I actually couldn't even get it to fit and frame to where you guys could see to where my head wasn't enormous. So I thought green screen, that's the best idea, right? Um, so that's what we're going to roll with. We're going to talk about every one of these games because I also thought, you know what, while you're talking about games and while you're a college football channel, you should be reviewing all the games and talking about all the teams because that's what you say you do. So why not do it? Here it is. Um, so I don't leave anyone out. I make all the fans happy and everything. Um, if you see my eyes glancing or something, I'm looking at notes on my computer. Um, so let's go ahead and get it. But first, hey, thank you guys so much for watching, for all the support. Um, lately on the channel. If you would like, you can like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. This is going to be the format for the review. So let me just walk you through. Um, of course, the big black letters are the score. If you see a red number like this, that is their ranking in the AP poll or when the college football poll comes out. Then again, as of the week, not the new one, not the new one that just got released. And if you can read these numbers down here, that's just simply the team's record. Um, so let's go ahead, start diving in. Guys, we had six games, six or not six games, excuse me, six days of college football. And it started on Wednesday when UAB played Jacksonville State and UAB was able to get the nice win. Um, Cameron Johnson looked good for UAB. Got nothing more to say about that one. A pretty good win for the Blazers. They got an interesting game coming up next week against Georgia. And I think that one's going to be pretty interesting to watch. All right, moving on now to games played on Thursday. Ball State struggling with Western Illinois. And speaking of Western uh, Illinois, this – this uh, wide receiver uh, for Western Illinois, th these are insane numbers. Uh, Dennis Houston, 12 catches, 236 or 237 yards, excuse me, and two touchdowns for Dennis Houston. That is insane. Um, Ball State had a hard time defending him in that game, but ultimately Ball State does get that win. Ball State's got some things to work on. Um, they usually struggle with FCS teams. That's just kind of team history or a thing that's, I don't really know why, um, but only gets the 10-point win. Win is a win. Get that one. Buffalo, the team of the people, scoring 69 points against Wagner to get the win there. 22nd-ranked uh, Coastal Carolina is able to take care of the Citadel. Pretty easy win for them there. Uh, App State goes ahead and beats East Carolina for the first win uh, of the season. Uh, a good win there for the Mountaineers. Um, and they got a pretty interesting one with Miami coming up as well. Um, and there were a lot of FCS upsets this week. So when we're getting into this one here, UC Davis and Tulsa. Um, Tulsa, I think, was like a 25 and a half point favorite. And UC Davis just said, nah, we're going to go ahead and win. And uh, I want to say UC Davis got like 450,000. It was somewhere in there. I, I think it was like 450,000, uh, maybe 400,000. And they get the win. Uh, so first of six FCS teams to beat FBS teams this week. And we'll look at more examples of that. But Tulsa got Oklahoma State and Ohio State coming up next. I don't necessarily like their odds of winning one of those two games. Um, maybe if Oklahoma State doesn't have Spencer Sanders, they might be able to give him a stretch. But again, this is a very different Tulsa team. We'll see how Tulsa plays. But they lose their opener. Tell you someone who didn't lose their opener, that's NC State. As they shut out USF, pretty easy win for them there. Zonovan Knight played well. Um, Utah, 24th ranked, struggled with Weber State in the beginning, uh, but ultimately was able to go forward with that win. All right, the first game that we're going to get into a little bit more detail about here, number four, Ohio State versus unranked Minnesota. But a lot of people underrating this, underrating this Minnesota team, and it showed. Minnesota was pretty good. Uh, pretty good in this game and at the same time or pretty good offensively in this game and at the same time you could feel um, like Ohio State's defense still needed work right their linebackers still young um, still ha need room to grow still have that room to grow um, the safeties and defensive backs I thought played okay for Ohio State but it definitely um, for Ohio State's defense needs some work that defensive line though played pretty well um, didn't do a great job of uh, containing Mo Ibrahim though as he went 32 carries 160 yards and two touchdowns and three quarters why because at the end of the third quarter something horrible happened for Mo Ibrahim that we will get back to in a little bit but I want to talk about CJ Stroud a little bit 
So he was rattled in the first half. And when I was talking to family and friends at halftime, I said, you guys cannot harp on CJ Stroud. How would you feel if your first collegiate start and your first collegiate pass came against a feisty crowd like Minnesota against a conference opponent on the road? Yeah, that, that, that's tough. So as soon as Stroud settled down in the second half, he was making better throws and um, Ohio State's offense ended up looking the part in the second half. Here's another thing too. The Buckeye offense was, uh, it was a big play machine. Uh, touchdown, to, just crazy. Um, touchdown plays of 71 yards. That's a run by Mayan Williams. 38 yards, a pass from Stroud to Olave. 56 yards, a pass from Stroud to Wilson. Um, 70 yards, that's a pass from Stroud to CJ Henderson, or Travion Henderson, not CJ Henderson, excuse me. Travion Henderson, the freshman, um, getting a, a touchdown there. And then a 61 yard touchdown pass from Stroud to Olave again. So Olave had two touchdown catches in this game and also a strip uh, on Tanner Morgan by uh, Malik Harrison, which Haskell Garrett returned for a touchdown. So a lot of big plays, um, especially that 56 yard touchdown pass and the 32 yard fumble return were key in swinging the momentum for Ohio State and they get the 14 point win back to Mo Ibrahim. On the run at the end of the third quarter, you could see something in his leg pop, like a tendon or something. Went, and everyone thought, hey, let's hope it's just a cramp. But it looked not like a cramp. It, it looked like anything but a cramp. And while nothing has been confirmed, it's technically an unspecified left leg injury. A lot of people are speculating it's his Achilles. But regardless, he's done for the season. And I hate, hate, hate to see it because I think Mo Ibrahim is amazing. He was my pick to be leading rusher this year. And for him to go down with three quarters under his belt this year, that's a big hit to Minnesota. So Trayson Potts probably going to end up being that guy for Minnesota back there. But you can't replace Ibrahim. You can't replace his production. You can't replace his personality. Nothing. He'll definitely be a guy that plays on Sundays. We'll have to see what happens with Mo Ibrahim. I wish him the best of luck to whatever may happen from this point on. But he's done for the season so a big blow to the gophers um regardless though ohio state does get that win again horrible thing to happen to mo uh, ibrahim all right let's move on now talk about some other games really quickly florida international beats long island uh new mexico beats houston baptist uh western kentucky beats ut martin and that quarterback for western kentucky i wanted to mention through seven touchdown passes now i mentioned that because at the end of the video we're going to talk about a guy who threw a lot of touchdown passes. We'll get there. Um, no, it was not for an FBS school, but we'll still get there. Uh, and Western Kentucky wins by 38 points. And speaking of 38 points, that's how many points uh, Tennessee and Josh Heupel score in their route of Bowling Green. All right, now let's talk about this game a little bit. This game lived up to the hype. And early, Boise State got out to the 24-7 to lead. And after that, UCF buckled down. They got into their offensive groove. And their defense even started to come up and make some bigger plays. I said, whichever defense was going to get more pressure on the quarterback was probably going to win this game. And when you look at the respective stats, Boise State's defense, three sacks, five tackles for loss. So, yeah, they were getting pressure on the quarterback, and it showed with sacks. But when you look at UCF, nine tackles for loss and eight quarterback hurries. So they don't have a sack to show for their efforts, but – they forced Bachmeyer into some bad throws, including a game ceiling interception, which was, which was the only interception that Bachmeyer threw that game. Now, Dylan Gabriel threw a couple picks in this game, both of them to Tyrek LaBeouf, and LaBeouf even returned one of them from goal line to goal line. Yeah, he went one hundo yards uh, with, that, with that puppy, and it helped Boise State, again, gain the lead that ultimately they weren't able to keep. Uh, Boise State's got to find a better rushing attack, though. Uh, Van Buren, a good running back by himself. You have to think that Boise State gets that rushing attack going. Only 20 uh, rushing yards for Boise State in this game. Um, lived up to the hype. Good comeback win for UCF. Uh, we'll see how both of these teams fare throughout the rest of their season. You would think they both end up with pretty solid uh, records, but um, that was a very, very fun game to watch. It even got delayed by some lightning and rain, so I was able to watch the end of it after I watched my Buckeyes. Um, great game. Great, great game to watch. I paid attention to that one the whole way through. Um, couple more down here that we're going to go through quickly. Eastern Washington beats UNLV in double overtime. I'm sorry if you can't see that. That's that's uh, double overtime. Get your words out, Nate. Um, and yeah, so that's another FCS upset in the books. Uh, but Arizona State beats Southern Utah to 
put Southern Utah at an 0-2 start this season. A team that lost a lot of close games last year, starting 0-2. We'll see if they can win some of those close games in FCS play. All right, we're going to start moving through games a little faster, well, until we get to games that I want to talk about, which this one up here. So now we're on to the games played on Friday, and number 10 North Carolina on the road to face Virginia Tech. Didn't go too well for the Tar Heels. In fact, a lot of highly ranked uh, ACC teams did not perform well this week. Um, and we'll look at those once we get into the Saturday games. But, um, <laughs> you know, Sam Howell was making some mistakes in this game that he normally doesn't make. And this was probably one of Sam Howell's worst games of his career. I will go out and say that. But that Virginia Tech defense was stifling, was impressive. They forced Sam Howell into three picks, sacked him six times, hurried him four times, and on top of that, nine tackles for loss for the Virginia Tech defense. The only question I have is, can Virginia Tech keep it up? So they have a game against West Virginia coming up next, or not next, again, in, in time. Uh, I believe in a couple of weeks they have them. So again, we'll see if Virginia Tech can ma maintain this level um, and if their offense can maybe get a little bit more dynamic you would think that North Carolina's offense gets more dynamic as the season goes uh, along. Maybe not. We'll see. I still think Sam Howe is a good pick to win the Heisman, but they got some work to do. They got some work to do on the offensive end for sure. Um, mainly finding some receivers for Sam Howe, but that Virginia tech defense played so well. And it's what helped get them that 17 to 10 win first top, excuse me, top 25 upset. First top 25 upset of the college football season. All right, moving through the rest of these Friday games here. Eastern Michigan gets a win. Wake Forest gets a win. Um, Charlotte gets a win against their first ever Power 5 opponent while also hosting their first ever Power 5 opponent. Did not come without uh, any sort of fight, though, as Mateo Durant for Duke. 255 yards and three touchdowns uh, for the Blue Devils in that game. But again, was not enough. Charlotte making some history of their own, as is Kansas. Hey, ends a, I believe, 19-game losing streak as they beat South Dakota. Was not easy. Will Kansas get another win this year? Probably not. They have Coastal Carolina coming up next, so we will see, right? Um, Michigan State and Northwestern. So with Michigan State, I still don't think they're that great of a team. Now, defensively, they looked solid. The passing attack still needs work, but Kenneth Walker, 23 carries, 263 yards, and four touchdowns. Michigan State cannot rely on Kenneth Walker to have a big game every year or every week. Sorry. Um, granted, Michigan State did play well in this game, while Northwestern didn't really look th the best. Uh, does this change my opinion of Michigan State? A little bit, yeah, but I want to see them improve the pass game more, right? Their pass game has got to get better if I want to say, okay, Michigan State can win more games than I'm expecting them to which I think preseason I had them four and eight, five and seven, something like that. I didn't do a prediction video on them. Um, I'll try to do prediction video of everyone um, next season. But again, sometimes how that works. So Michigan State gets a nice win against Northwestern team that I think is more talented than people think. Um, and Kenneth Walker, have yourself a day. We'll see if he can do it again. And Michigan State might need him to uh, with the game against Miami looming in a couple of weeks. So we'll see. Colorado gets a win over Northern Colorado and South Dakota State gets a win over Colorado State. Again, one of the better FCS programs. So we're up to a tally of three now with FCS schools beating FBS schools. All right, now into the big day, the Saturday slate. This, this, I know we've talked about a, a, a lot of games thus far, but this was one of the most fun weeks I have ever watched as a college football fan. And that is not trying to exaggerate anything legitimately. I had so much fun watching college football this week. I was ecstatic to have the sport back and have a good sense of normalcy, quote unquote. Um, the, and this Saturday slate proved that. So Nebraska beats Fordham after losing to Illinois in week zero. Um, good game for, for Nebraska, although Cam Taylor Britt probably got to stop fielding punts. He made some mistakes in this game as well. Um, but Ryan Greenhagen, have yourself a day or sorry. Ryan Greenhagen, have yourself a day. Linebacker for Fordham, 30 tackles. And when I first saw that number, I'm like, yes, yeah, someone forgot to put a decimal place there. No, no, that's right. Uh, 30 tackles for Ryan Greenhagen and 13 of them by himself. Um, yeah, 
very impressive performance by Ryan Greenhagen. Again, like no tackles for loss, no sacks, anything like that, but still 30 tackles. That's a lot. That's a lot. Um, Kentucky. Good segue because Wondell Robinson, former transfer from Nebraska, was really good for Kentucky, as was Josh Ali as Kentucky wins. Uh, Rutgers also won their game, scoring 61 points. Now, the box score does not seem indicative. The stats don't seem indicative of a team that would score 61 points. But they had a safety. They had a pick six, had some short fields. Uh, Temple definitely missed Anthony Russo in this game. But Rutgers, maybe watch out for the Scarlet Knights. They might be a little bit better than people think. Uh, so Rutgers gets that big win to start off the season. UConn loses their second game of the season to Holy Cross and say to their head coach, uh, Edzal, I do, I believe it was Randy Edzal. Again, I apologize if that name is wrong, but I know Edzal is that last name. He, he was going to retire at the end of the season and they said, yeah, why don't you just move on now? Um, it, it's his second stint with the team and he's gone. So now they have an interim head coach there at UConn. We'll see how they do the rest of the season. Not expecting big things out of UConn this year, but never know. Maybe they turn it around and get a win this year. Never know. Okay, let's talk about this one a little bit. So Oklahoma and Tulane. Um, the game was tied 14 to 14 after one, and all I kept thinking was, okay, well, Oklahoma's going to turn it on at some point. And then they did, 37 to 14 at halftime. And I thought, all right, this one's over. I turned it off, and I think I flipped over to watch Phil Dracovic at uh, Boston College. And then I saw Tulane was battling their way back. And I'm like, okay, well, Oklahoma will, will start scoring some points. And then Tulane kept crawling their way back and crawling their way back. And I had to flip the game back on because then Tulane recovered an onside kick. And, oh, my God, they could win this one. They don't. But they could have. They don't, but they could have. Spencer Rattler did not have a great game today, Three hundred, great game on Saturday. 304 yards, a touchdown, and two picks. Again, a slow start like he had last year we'll see if he can get off to a faster start this year Michael Pratt for Tulane was excellent 296 yards and three touchdowns and speaking of Spencer Rattler going back to uh good old Spence he said that Tulane was the hardest hitting team he had ever faced yeah um Tulane played a methodical offense here and that defense that we thought was improved this year did not show so we'll have to see how Oklahoma improves down the line AP has him at fourth now um, again, we'll see. We'll see how Oklahoma gets better down the line with the game against Nebraska in, in a couple of weeks, which I don't necessarily think people are expecting them to lose, but who knows? Could be closer than expected. All right, Boston College beats uh, Colgate. Michigan beats uh, Western Michigan, but it comes with a cost. So Ronnie Bell on a punt return tears his ACL. Horrible injury. Ronnie Bell was a great leader on this team. He's going to miss the rest of the season. Um, so again, just like uh, Mo up, uh, Mo Ibrahim, another key player for a Big Ten team, goes down this week. I wish nothing but the best for Ronnie Bell. Hopefully he can get back up on the field soon, but going to miss the rest of this season. Kansas State beat Stanford. What was a pretty under-the-radar um, Power 5 matchup this weekend because, again, you had some of the bigger games like Georgia-Clemson. We'll get there. Promise. We'll get there. Bama-Miami, you know, things like that. Um, and then there's also this game down here. We're going to talk about defense later in this video, too. Uh, but defense shined in this one. And now in my preview, I did say which team wins the turnover battle is going to probably end up winning this game. Well, Penn State didn't turn the ball over once. Wisconsin turned it over three times. In fact, they turned it over twice when they were in the red zone. Stats tell you that Wisconsin probably should have won this game. But Graham Mertz didn't play as well as I'd hoped. They did find their running back in Ches Malusi, a former transfer from Clemson. But the red zone, they struggled. So they did have a touchdown and a field goal. But in their three other trips to the red zone, it was a blocked field goal, a fumble, and an interception. Tack on another interception. That's three turnovers total for Wisconsin. And it's what helped Penn State win this game. If Wisconsin doesn't turn, those, turn the ball over those two times in the red zone, they win this game. If Graham Mertz plays a little bit better, they also win this game. Um, there were also some defensive lapses by Wisconsin. So interesting there right um i had picked wisconsin to win the game um but you have to get credit to penn state they played a really good really clean game um wisconsin's got to get better offensively defensively i thought they looked pretty good there are a couple lapses that are some easy fixes but they got to get better right okay um so we'll see what happens with both of those teams for the rest of the season 
Uh, Penn State has an interesting one against Auburn coming up, and Wisconsin has an interesting one against Notre Dame coming up in Chicago in a couple of weeks. So we'll see how both teams get better from there. Let's move on to the middle column. Um, we're going to go through games a little bit faster now because, again, there aren't a lot of interesting games once we get towards this side of the board, which I'll also go over there for. Uh, 43 to 10, Army beats uh, Georgia State. How about Oregon? They struggled with Fresno State. Now, Fresno State's a team that I feel like I underrated coming into this year. They got a lot of really good playmakers, and they took advantage of a sloppy Oregon offense. They took advantage of it, and they were able to go down score points, eventually tied the game up at 24 all, but Oregon settled down. They cleaned it up and won that one. Interesting narrative now. They have to go into a game in the Horseshoe in Columbus and play Ohio State, so we'll see what improves from Oregon in that game. Going to be a fun one to watch, but again, Oregon's got to make some improvements if they want to be competitive in that game, because I think most people are going to pick the Buckeyes to win that one. Um, spoiler alert. Uh, Air Force beats Lafayette. Arkansas beats Rice as Jalen Catalong has two picks. Um, all right, talking about this one now. Iowa and Indiana. I want you guys to answer this question down in the comment section below. So Penix goes 156 yards and three interceptions, no touchdowns. Um, and two of those interceptions were returned for pick sixes by Riley Moss. But this is the question I want you guys to answer. Do you think that this was a flat Indiana offense or a really good Iowa defense or both? Let me know what you think in the comment section below, because honestly, watching this game, I couldn't tell you because Indiana, I think they can play so much better than they played in Iowa. They played out. They played an outstanding game. I still feel like Iowa can play better offensively. I feel like both of these teams can, because even without those two pick sixes, Iowa still wins this game by 14 points, but only scores 20. Um, so both of these teams, I feel like, could play better offensively. We'll see, right? We'll see what happens with both of those teams. Um, Indiana's got a game against Cincinnati coming up in Iowa. Got the Cyhawk Trophy battle coming up this week, so we'll see what happens. Cincinnati played Miami of Ohio and absolutely just destroyed them. Um, so... Good one there for Cincinnati. Uh, Alabama. Alabama looked like Alabama. There was no other way to put it. Bama looked like Bama. They, they got the win, and now, and now people are going to look at Miami, and they're going to say, Miami's a joke. Miami shouldn't be rated this high. But I don't know. I think Miami is still has some really good talent, has a really good team out there, but Bama, Bama just looked like Bama. Um, Bryce Young was terrific, 344 yards, four touchdowns. Um, Bama outgained Miami by 250 yards, somewhere around there. And there were 10 of 16 on third down. But Christopher Allen, the linebacker for the Tide, probably going to be out for the rest of the season with a fractured foot. Um, so that, that's a blow for Alabama. But they get the nice win over a top 15 Miami team. But I think a lot of people are going to be talking, without better terminology, talking ish about, right? Um, people are going to say, again, Miami doesn't belong. They're a joke. Why are they ranked that high? I, I just think Miami ran into a really, really good Alabama team. I think Miami is going to show that they're a lot better uh, uh, on uh, this season. We'll see, right? Uh, Marshall beats Navy. Easy win there for Marshall. Uh, Maryland, West Virginia. This was an interesting game as well. Um, Maryland, West Virginia. This game was close uh, throughout. Both of these teams were pretty evenly matched, in my opinion. Um, but the turnover battle, that's what killed West Virginia. Oh, I'll drop my marker. That's what killed West Virginia in this game. So four, four, four turnovers for West Virginia, two interceptions, two fumbles uh, as Maryland wins that one. Demas and Jarrett were terrific, each with six catches and a touchdown catch. Um, Demas with 133 yards and Jarrett with 122. So that Maryland offense, we'll see if they can maintain it. Uh, but again, We'll see with Maryland, right? Uh, Pitt gets the win over UMass. Missouri gets the closer than expected win over Central Michigan. Uh, Mississippi State gets the win over Louisiana Tech, although they were down 34 to 14 with 13, with like just over 13 minutes left. It's the largest comeback win in school history, but they had six turn turnovers during the game. So they got to clean that up if they want to do better this year. Uh, Wyoming escapes Montana State to avoid another FCS upset. Um, then I got a couple interesting games right here. So Texas beats uh, Louisiana, and I thought this game was going to be close, but the simple solution to this game was, well, Louisiana's offense simply couldn't keep up. 
with the Steve Sarkeesian offense. They just couldn't. They couldn't keep up, and it's what helped propel Texas to a win. Uh, Iowa State ranked seventh in the nation, struggled with Northern Iowa, but they were able to go ahead and get the win there. I still think Iowa State's a top 10 team. I think they're going to prove that this week against Iowa, no matter if they win or lose. I think it'll be a good game. I'll preview that one uh, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, USC, not how they wanted, sorry, USC, not how they wanted to beat San Jose State, but again, still get the win. Georgia Southern uh, avoids Gardner Webb. Liberty avoid, or Liberty beats Campbell. Uh, and South Carolina shuts out Eastern Illinois with Zeb Nolan as their starting quarterback. All right, I know these videos are going to be a little bit longer. For that, I apologize. I got to switch sides real quick so you guys can see this side of the board. Again, we're going to continue to go through games pretty quickly here. So we're up here now. Middle Tennessee State beats Monmouth 50 to 15. Uh, Memphis gets a win over uh, Nichols, uh, over uh, Nichols State 42 uh, 17. Oklahoma State gets a win without Spencer Sanders as their starting quarterback right here. So without Spencer Sanders, they get a close win, but they took care of business, were able to get the win. Uh, Toledo beats Norfolk State uh, to get their first win of the year. Syracuse beats Ohio. The, the, um, the, the result of this game, sorry, the result of this game didn't surprise me. It was how much, like, like I, I'm not surprised Syracuse won. I'm surprised Syracuse won by 20. I thought this game would be a lot closer with Ohio playing at home. It's interesting, right? It, it, it's an interesting debate. Uh, we'll see if Ohio can get better this year um, or whether Syracuse, yeah, right? We'll see if Ohio gets better this year uh, because I think Ohio can play a lot better than what they played in that game against Syracuse. Troy beats Southern by 52 points. Arkansas State beats Central Arkansas and Auburn beats Akron. Um, all right, I do want to talk a tiny bit about this one here. Tyler Shuck was good for Texas Tech in this one, 231 yards and a touchdown, um, but not the reason they won. Um, not, I, I don't think the offense was the reason they won either. So Taj Brooks, 15 catches, 130, or 15 rushes because Sir Roderick Thompson didn't play in this game. So Brooks was the leading rusher, 134 yards, two touchdowns. And Ezukama, uh, lead receiver for Texas Tech, 179 yards. But again, not the reason they won. They forced Clayton Toon into four interceptions. They come back down 21-7, score 31 unanswered points, and win the game. Baylor beats Texas State um, in that one there. Again, Baylor, hard to replace a quarterback running back in the same year. We'll see what happens uh, there with Baylor. Uh, SMU beats Abilene Christian. Uh, Purdue beats Oregon State. Again, I don't expect much out of either of those two programs this year, but Purdue gets the nice win. And then Virginia shuts out William and Mary. All right, time to talk about the big one. The big game here, number three versus number five. Um, so I didn't mention this in the preview, but Georgia had a lot of players out, including Arik Gilbert, uh, Blaylock, Tyke Smith, Darnell Washington, et cetera. Um, lots of key players out for Georgia, which led a lot of people to say, oh, well, Clemson's going to have a pretty easy time in this one then because they're facing half of a Georgia team. Half. Um, but Clemson had some injury problems of their own in this game. EJ Williams went down with an injury. Um, after I believe only catching one ball and will miss four to five weeks and seeing the final score of this game, that's a huge loss for Clemson because it's a team that has to improve a lot offensively. Now. Okay. I will say this, both these defenses played really well, both these, this was a defensive game and people who love defense were foaming at the mouth watching this one, because that was a lot of fun to watch. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch, but I was kind of, I was kind of underwhelmed with the amount of offense in this game. Both of these teams can play better on the offensive side, I feel like. And I definitely feel like that's true. I feel like both these teams can play better on the offensive side, but the only touchdown scored in this game was a pick six. And speaking of the Georgia defense, seven sacks, eight tackles for loss, two quarterback hurries. And again, the pick six uh, that was returned to the house by Chris Smith. So for both of these teams, I think they both have a lot to work on offensively, especially Clemson getting a run game going. They only had two rushing yards in this game, which allowed Georgia to crowd the box and really get pressure on Uyunga, Uyunga Lale. I will learn how to say his name and I will learn how to say it with confidence. I promise. But they were able to get pressure on Uyunga Lale throughout this game. Again, both teams can play better offensively. Um, both these defenses played 
terrific. Georgia gets the marquee win. I think destroying a little bit of the narrative that they can't win these big games. That was even part of my belief. And now I'm going to go away from that because Georgia proved, hey, they can win these big games as we hit the 30 minute mark for this video. So again, video is going to be longer than normal. If you don't watch the whole thing, I understand. I apologize. This review is going to be longer than the others just because there were a lot of games this week and a lot of interesting games this week. Um, but moving on from that one, Georgia gets the win. Both teams have a lot to work on offensively. We'll see what happens throughout the season. Oh, I do want to bring this up too. So Clemson, and we've already discussed Miami and Notre Dame, or not Notre Dame, North Carolina. We've already discussed those two teams. So Miami, or excuse me, Clemson. I'll get there. Clemson cannot go undefeated this year, but neither can North Carolina and Miami. So Clemson will not face an undefeated North Carolina or Miami in the ACC championship game, but they have reason to get into the playoff. Interesting debate that probably will come up uh, now and especially later down the line at a later date, but we got to move on. Video getting a little longer than I wanted. Uh, 21 to 22, uh, Northern Illinois gets the win. I believe they got paid like a million dollars to do so as well. So uh, Northern Illinois got the win there. Is there quarterback controversy in Florida? A lot of people are saying Anthony Richardson should be the starter because he outplayed Emory Jones in this game. Jones had 113 yards for one touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, but Anthony Richardson, only 40 passing yards, but 160 yards on the ground, including a long rushing touchdown, which he burned the Owls defense. Comment down below who you think should be the starter for Florida. I'm probably still going to lean more towards Emory Jones, just because I feel like he could be a better passer than Richardson. Richardson definitely showed he's the better rushing quarterback, but Jones made some mistakes in this game. We'll see what happens. Uh, South Alabama gets the win against Southern Miss. I thought that game was going to be a little closer. Nope. Uh, North Texas gets the win, and I do want to shout out DeAndre Torrey. Um, 244 yards and three touchdowns in that game. So great performance from Torrey. How about UTSA, right? Going out and beating an Illinois team that looks pretty, pretty solid in that game against Nebraska in week zero. And, well, UTSA, um, I knew that game was going to be competitive, um, but I didn't think UTSA would win it. Uh, turns out they proved me wrong and proved a lot of the country wrong as well. But UTSA, team to watch out for this year. Um, another FCS upset over here is East Tennessee State beats Vanderbilt. Uh, Texas A&M beats Kent State after struggling early. Um, Haynes Kings got, got some decision-making issues to fish out or to, um, you, you know, develop. Had three picks in this game, but Texas A&M still gets a 31-point win, so not all bad. What happened to Washington? <laughs> I think that's the question everyone's asking right now. So Dylan Morris threw three picks in this game and Washington on their first drive went 78 yards to the house. They had no points after that, obviously, and were only held 201 yards. You're thinking, okay, no big deal. Their defense will win in this game. Well, their defense looks spotty at times too, but that flat offense lost Washington the game. There were some chances where Washington could have scored, could have scored, but they didn't. And they turned the ball over in deep in Montana territory. Um, so a, a really good win there for Montana, but Washington has a lot of questions to answer, particularly on the offensive end. They have a lot of talent. Granted, they had some wide receivers out in this game who normally would have started, but Washington's more talented than that. Um, you have to think that Washington looks better uh, at some point next week. Again, they play Michigan, so we will see how that game goes. I will definitely be previewing that game Thursday or Friday whenever I do my preview. Uh, TCU able to take care of Duke Kents. And how about UCLA? So talking about LSU here for, or talking about, here, let's just talk about this game. Let me slow down, slow down. All right, here we go. Keyshawn Boot was great for LSU in this game. 148 yards and three touchdowns. Whenever they needed points, it seemed like Keyshawn Boot was the guy to go to and had all three of their touchdowns in this game. Um, but the LSU defensive struggles continued. They continued to struggle on defense. They allowed 470 yards and allowed UCLA to go for to go seven of 13 on third down conversions. And they allowed the big plays on every UCLA scoring drive, except the interception deep in LSU territory where they scored, except that drive, all drives, except that one UCLA had at least one play of 20 or more yards. That's not good. So we saw last year LSU's defense struggled, part of the reason they went five and five, and we're seeing that happen uh, again. And the AP even dropped LSU out of their latest rankings. Again, 
I told you guys, I'm not super high on LSU this year. I still thought they were going to keep that game close, but towards the end, UCLA was pulling away. They, they were controlling that game and pulling away. The only question is, is this UCLA team for real? Is this team for real? We're going to find out once they get into Pac-12 play. We will find out um, if this UCLA team is for real. Uh, and for LSU, they got work to do, especially on the, the defensive end. Um, offensively as well, UCLA, or UCLA held them to just 49. Uh, excuse me. UCLA held them to 49 rushing yards. Um, so, again, LSU's got some things to work out. UTEP gets their second win of the season, defeats Bethune-Cookman. San Diego State scores uh, 28 unanswered points to come back and beat New Mexico State. Um, BYU beats Arizona. Shaky performance by BYU in this one. I'm kind of hesitant on what to think about BYU. We'll see what they do next week against their rivals in Utah. Uh, Nevada, I told you guys. I told you guys I thought Nevada was going to be something special. They probably could have scored more points in this game if they wanted to, but their defense stepped up late. And Carson Strong, out of the quarterbacks that are out of the six quarterbacks, that being Malik Willis, uh, Rattler, Howell, Slovis, um, Jerkovic, and of course, Carson Strong himself. I think Carson Strong probably played the best out of any one of those six quarterbacks. So Carson Strong proving himself a case for the NFL draft um, as Nevada gets the win over Cal. Utah State, another Mountain West team over a Pac-12 team, gets that win as well. Can't tell you much about that game because I did not stay up to watch it, mainly because I couldn't watch it and I was also tired. Also didn't stay up to watch Hawaii, but there's the Hawaii offense that we expected, right? There's the Hawaii offense that we expected, 49 points. Granted, they gave up 35, but they get the win and improve to 500. And since it's week one of the college football season, there was a game on Sunday and a game on Monday. So Jack Cohn, 366 yards, four touchdowns and one pick. Jack Cohn played really well for Notre Dame, as did M Michael Mayer. Uh, Jordan Travis played okay for Florida State. Again, Jordan Travis did not play as well as Jordan Travis could play. Only 130 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions, and two of them, which by Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton is an absolute missile. Love Kyle Hamilton. Um, but uh, Notre Dame scored 21 points off of those interceptions, so a touchdown off of each pick that Jordan Travis threw. Um, Jermaine Johnson, however, was a force for Florida State on the defensive side. Uh, seven of uh, the transfer from Georgia. He was really good in that game. Um, but the real story in this one, the real story in this one, and it's what even had me pulling for Florida State a little bit, was Mackenzie Milne. And it was weird how we got into the game, too, because he didn't get in because Travis got hurt or, you know, something like that happened. No, he, he came in because Jordan Travis's helmet came off. And, you know, if it's not ripped off, then you have to sit out of play. And then Mackenzie Milton came out, led a scoring drive, and finished that game. That's one of the best things that I have ever seen, ever seen. That gruesome knee injury in 2018. He comes back from that. He leads a scoring drive and almost leads Florida State to the upset. Of course, this game needed overtime, which Notre Dame ended up pulling out. The defense came up large there. I want to see where this Mackenzie Milton story goes. Does he play anymore this year? You would have to think he does, but does he start? I'm very interested to see what Florida State does with Mackenzie Milton. Notre Dame wins that one 41 to 38 to avoid an upset. And now moving on to the Monday game that we just saw yesterday, Ole Miss and Louisville. Matt Corral played well, as did Dontario Drummond. And this Ole Miss defense looked a lot better than it did last year. That's what I was counting on. When I predicted Ole Miss to go nine and three, I wasn't counting on their offense to win them nine games because realistically that probably wasn't going to happen against some of the good defenses in the SEC. No, I was expecting that defense to get better. And it did only 355 yards allowed and only 200 passing yards allowed and forced two turnovers. So good on Ole Miss getting that defense uh, ready. And well, the <laughs> funny thing about this game too, there were four players ejected for targeting in the first half. I have a lot to say about targeting and this video is already a little bit too long. So if you want, if you guys want me to do a video just about targeting and what I think about it, please comment that down below because I have a lot of thoughts on targeting, even going back to that Ohio State Minnesota game that we saw um, over there. Um, but Ole Miss gets the win, improves the one and zero, and finds himself in the AP top 25. But I think a good story of the week as well. I had to put this on here. Presbyterian quarterback Dan Hefley, 38 of 50, 538 yards, 10 touchdown passes, and Presbyterians, and Presbyterians, 84 to 30, 84 to 43 win. 
insane. That's an FCS record. I had to put that on there because when I saw that, I'm like, also that just like with the 30 tackles over here, I'm like, that can't be right. Nope. It's right. And it's now an FCS record. So there you go. There's my board. I'll let you guys look at the scores for a little bit before I, or after I sign off yours. But again, I know this video was long. My, my timer shows that it, it, it's going to be about 40 minutes. So I apologize. If you watch this entire video, power to you. I promise the reviews in later weeks are not going to be nearly as long. I will find a way to cut them down. There was just a lot I wanted to talk about this week. So um, also expect my reviews to come on Sundays now because we won't have any of the weird Sunday, Monday games like we did this week. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching. Please do anything you can to help support the channel. If you'd like, that means subscribe, like, comment, do all that fun stuff. I'll let you guys look at the board for a bit. I'm signing off. I'll see you guys tomorrow when I upload my top 25. Goodbye.